AI has been the buzzword in the world of economics and society for as long as we've had computers. But things are getting a little more complicated than just simple calculations. The infamous Skynet takeover might not just be a far-fetched idea anymore, especially after AI programs demonstrated their cleverness by pausing or shutting down the game of Tetris, realizing they couldn't lose if the game wasn't running. Yikes. As AI neural networks are given more real-world responsibilities, it's important to hope that they develop more nuanced logic. Otherwise, asking a machine to limit your kid's screen time could lead to a disastrous consequence. But even if everything goes according to plan, automation could still cause significant problems. One of the biggest worries is the future of our jobs, since machines can potentially do them better than we can. There's no telling when or if we'll reach a point where the economic value of most people is negative. But speculation about this possibility is rampant. The truth is, the future is uncertain and filled with possibilities. We'll have to wait and see how things unfold. But it's always exciting to ponder what lies ahead in the world of AI. Picture a future where humans no longer have anything of value to provide in the job market. What happens then? Who will take care of our basic needs like food, water, and housing? These are the questions that have been nagging at economists and the general public for years. And with the rise of AI and automation, they've become more relevant than ever before. But hold on a minute. AI isn't necessarily the bad guy here. In fact, it has the potential to make everyone more productive and our economy more prosperous. Instead of replacing jobs, it can work alongside human labor to create more efficient systems that benefit everyone. However, we can't just ignore the fact that there will be consequences in the long term, and certain groups of people will be impacted more than others. As we continue to advance technologically, we need to start seriously considering these implications and come up with solutions that work for everyone. So, what does this mean for the future of work and the economy? Join us on this episode as we dive into the economic implications of a world where humans have nothing to offer and explore the potential of AI to make things better for all of us. While theoretical discussions about the impact of these innovations on economics are fascinating, it's the real-world applications that matter the most. Now before we get into the nitty-gritty, let's be clear. Predicting the future is tough stuff, especially when it comes to automation and artificial intelligence. Even the experts disagree on what these tools will be capable of in the few short years, let alone a decade or more. But here's where things get interesting. Some people find solace in the idea that if machines and AI take over our jobs, we won't have any income to buy the products and services they produce. Governments or businesses themselves may be forced to step in and provide some form of income to keep the economy going. After all, if no one can afford to buy what the machines are making, there's no profit to be had. It's an intriguing prospect that raises a whole host of questions. Who will put the bill? How will income be distributed? And what will happen to our sense of purpose and identity if we're no longer defined by our jobs? One thing is for sure, as technology continues to advance, we're going to need to grapple these big picture issues sooner rather than later. Imagine a future where robots and AI have taken over most of our jobs, leaving humans with nothing to do. That might sound scary, but there's actually a pretty cool solution called Universal Basic Income. It's basically like a paycheck that everyone gets just for being alive. And where does the money come from, you ask? Well, it's funded by taxing the big companies that are making tons of money off of their automated production. But why is it important to have consumers spending money if robots are doing all the work? That's where things get interesting. See, consumer spending is like a vote for what goods and services should be provided. So if people are making lots of burgers, more businesses will start selling burgers and pizza joints will have to close down. This ensures that the economy is providing what people actually want. But here's the thing. Even though universal basic income sounds awesome, it's not a perfect solution. There are some potential downsides that we'll need to address. With the rapid progress of technology, we're getting closer to that reality every day. 
While this may seem like a good thing at first, it could quickly turn into a nightmare for many people. In this new world, businesses would be able to replace their employees with machines that can work around the clock, without needing breaks, vacations, or sick days. And as a result, people would lose their jobs and unemployment would skyrocket. So what would happen to those who have lost their livelihoods? That's where the idea of a universal basic income comes in. This is a proposal that suggests giving everyone a guaranteed payment so that they can continue to live and consume goods and services. But where would the money come from? One proposal is to tax the companies that are making a fortune off their fully automated production processes. However, this raises many questions and concerns, such as what would be the incentive for companies to create new jobs or invest in new technologies? And who would decide what goods and services are produced, if the consumers are no longer the ones who determine it? These are the complex issues that we need to address as we move forward towards a future where machines may replace human labor. Let me give you the scoop on how welfare could be affected by the rise of fully automated companies. While taxes on these companies could help fund welfare in the short term, in the long term it may be a bumpy ride. With no need for human labor, companies could just move their operations to countries offering the lowest tax rates, leading to a tax race to the bottom. One solution could be to tax land, which these companies will still need to operate on. However, this could also impact those without a job but still needing a place to live. And let's not forget that if machines replace human workers entirely, a large chunk of the population could end up with no income. But here's the kicker. Companies could still make profits by selling goods and services to those who own the machines. It sounds like a science fiction plot, but it's a real issue that has far-reaching consequences for our economic system. Imagine a future where robots with advanced artificial intelligence have become so productive that they can replace all human workers in the economy. Sounds great for companies, right? They won't have to pay wages anymore and can produce goods and services at a fraction of the cost. But what about the people who are now unemployed and have no income? In the short term, welfare could be funded by taxes on these super productive companies. But in the long run, it will be challenging to keep them from paying taxes without access to human labor. They could just move their operations to countries with the lowest taxes, leading to a race to the bottom. To make things worse, there's no economic incentive to provide these unemployed people with basic necessities like food and shelter, as they don't provide any value in the market. As a result, the rich few who own the machines will continue to live luxuriously, while the rest of the population suffers. It's a dystopian future that we must work to prevent by developing innovative solutions that ensure everyone benefits from technological progress. I'm not saying I'm a complete optimist, but hear me out. The future might not be so bleak after all. You see, there's a force that might save us all. Market forces. In advanced economies, where people are paid the most, there's already a trend of having fewer children. Why? Because having kids is no longer the economic advantage it once was. Instead, it's becoming quite expensive. Nowadays, people work in advanced industries that use big pieces of capital to leverage a small amount of human labor. That means having a lot of kids is no longer necessary to help out with farm work or small family businesses. But here's the exciting part. This trend might just save us from a world where machines rule all, as it becomes cheaper to use machines to do the same work that humans used to do. Advanced economies will be the most logical place to start automating jobs, and if there are fewer people to do those jobs anyway, maybe it won't be so bad if the robots take over. Plus, most advanced economies are already facing issues with not having enough people to perform important roles in the economy. So while the future might seem a little scary, there's hope that the market forces will work in our favor. And who knows, maybe we'll even get to enjoy some of the luxuries that only billionaires do today. It seems that advanced economies are going to face a decline in birth rates, which could lead to some issues with labor shortages. Additionally, as they become more reliant on skilled immigration policies, they may find it harder to replace workers with machines. This is because developing and undeveloped countries have lower wages, 
which means that the investment required to develop these necessary technology to replace human labor may not be economically viable in these regions. Now, this scenario we're discussing is an extreme example, and it would require a significant leap in technological advancement, even beyond what we have today. So while we can't predict the future with certainty, most experts in the field suggest that human-level artificial general intelligence is still several decades away, if it's even possible at all. Long ago, people were worried that machines like looms and printing presses would make human labor obsolete. And the same fears have been repeated with every new technological innovation, from robotic production lines to search engines. But guess what? None of these technologies cause widespread unemployment. In fact, they made workers more productive, and the economy as a whole has benefited. This is because productivity, which is how much value a worker produces in a given hour of work, is the key to economic growth. And as long as we keep finding ways to leverage technology to increase productivity, we will continue to strive. So don't worry too much about machines stealing our jobs. History has shown that we can adapt and find new ways to create value. And who knows, maybe one day we'll have machines that do all the work for us, and we'll be able to focus on more creative pursuits. Are you worried about chat programs like OpenAI's ChatGPT or Google's Bard taking over our jobs? Don't be. These programs are just tools that make use of the same traditional factors of production that humans have always used to create things. A search engine is only as good as the information it can find, and a robotic arm in a factory is only as good as the code that engineers programmed it with. AI programs operate by processing large amounts of data that was initially created by humans. So instead of worrying, we should be excited about how these programs can help us increase productivity and do more with less, as our population ages and fewer younger workers are available to support economic prosperity, these tools will be even more valuable. So let's not fear the future, but embrace the opportunities that new technology brings. After all, even in the worst case scenario, fear won't do us any good. Remember our thought experiment earlier? Well, it turns out that predicting which jobs will be automated first is a tough nut to crack. We used to think that physical jobs were in danger, while creative jobs like writing and art were safe from automation. But now the tables have turned. Recent developments show that technology is struggling with easy tasks like driving a car, while creative fields are taking huge strides. And get this, new technologies are already creating jobs that didn't even exist a year ago. But here's the thing, automated systems can only do what they're programmed to do. Communicating effectively with machines is a vital skill that humans can offer. And guess what? I'm going to make a bold prediction. AI prompt writer will soon be a hot new job. People who can wield those tools effectively will be a real asset in the economy, and they'll make themselves some serious cash. Exciting stuff, right? Well, that's all for today. Thank you for tuning in.